James Day, public television pioneer and chairman of the CUNY TV Advisory Board, passed away in April 2008. His legacy includes the series Day at Night, which aired for 130 episodes beginning in 1973. The program features interviews with many of the great thinkers and achievers of the 20th century. These 30-year-old programs have been restored. The interviews remain fresh and relevant today, exploring issues that are still important to society. Showing them again is CUNY TV's tribute to Jim and his contributions to public television. Norman Lear is the creator and executive producer of two of television's hottest properties, All in the Family and Maud. He jointly owns these and a third, Sanford and Son, with his partner of 14 years, Alan Yorkin. Because the trio of programs, as every television viewer must know, controls the top of the heap and those precious indices to success, audience ratings, the two men have become among the most powerful in television. Norman Lear has also become one of the most celebrated, condemned, and controversial of producers for his efforts to open up television to the treatment of contemporary themes and the use of language heretofore barred from the sensitive medium. Norman, you've been described in print many times as a dedicated liberal, deeply concerned with social and political problems. Do you think that uh, uh, your several television programs with their enormous popularity can have any significant effect upon bringing about the kind of changes you'd like to see brought about? I, I really don't know. Uh, I've, I've been asked the question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's a, it's a most difficult question to answer. Is it important uh, to you that, 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 that they the, bring about any kind of change? Uh, it isn't because uh, I can't think of myself or uh, the kind of work we do in those terms. Mm -hmm. uh, wh the first time I heard the question was uh, in, in this manner, is all in the family when it first began uh, going to make any change in, in prejudice uh, and bigotry? I, uh, you know, is it going to cause people to understand a little bit more about themselves yeah. and so forth if they see themselves in Archie Bunker? And, and I would answer, uh, I think it will do, uh, is, uh, you know, uh, no better than the Judeo-Christian ethic of some 3,000 years. What seems uh, not to have Which seems to have uh, <laughs> been yeah. a complete bust in that yeah. department. Yeah. And I, I don't know how you can ask of, uh, of a half-hour situation comedy mm -hmm. uh, whether it can do something that that ethic has not been able to accomplish. But the, the situation comedies with which you have been associated do stand out from other situation comedies in that there is a kind of underlying serious purpose. Whether it was in, obviously it had to be intentional. You wouldn't dealt with wouldn't have dealt with bigotry if it was not intentional. Well, it doesn't come from uh, from a desire to do uh, a topic. Uh, to educate. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you exactly what the line of, uh, uh, of thought is. Uh, the first responsibility any of these shows have is to entertain. That's built we, into the system, isn't it? I mean, that's, it's impossible to survive in the right. system if they're not, of commercial TV without that. If, if they're not entertaining, then they're not going to uh, uh, achieve the rating and they're not going to mean anything. So first and foremost, they must be uh, in the format that we find ourselves funny. And uh, so that's our first yeah. uh, intent. Then uh, as we collect, and when I say as we collect, I'm talking about uh, a number of wonderful writers on each of the shows and director, producer, and so forth, to talk about what we're going to do. Uh, occasionally, uh, we'll kid about it. We'll add up the years that we represent. And we find we're 300 years of men sitting there to talk about what we're going to do about an episode of Maud. Uh, well, you can't represent, you can't be 300 years of collected men with any sense at all uh, looking at the world today, uh, even wanting to entertain and not think of something of a more important nature uh, than uh, the some kinds Some shows of, must do that. Well, I suppose there are some shows mm -hmm. that, that, that continue to do shows uh, related, uh, a show wh whose biggest problem might be uh, 
uh, dad, uh, mother ruined the car, a bumped offender, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, will dad be able to prevent her from... I can recall uh, that plot very well. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, the roast is ruined and the, and the boss is coming to dinner. I'm sure you recall that plot. But life is more serious than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we discover that people laugh harder at the things they care about the most. They do? So they do. Mm -hmm. They do. If you can engage them viscerally in somebody's problem, in some concern, within the, the, the realm of comedy, mm -hmm. they will laugh infinitely harder. Mm -hmm. So All in the Family is funniest when, uh, when Edith is really uh, intent about something, when Archie really is worried about his job or whatever the problem happens yeah. to be. Norman, how do you feel about uh, the criticism against the show? There was one... I don't like it. You don't? Uh, none, of us, <laughs> none, of us, none of us like criticism against ourselves, I know. But I was thinking of the criticism that was in the New York Times by Laura Z. Hobson, which you recall very well. Yes. You, you responded to it, as I remember, yeah. in which she, as others have, have said, uh, fears that making bigotry a laughable thing putting it in the context of comedy, makes it more respectable. You're, uh, what she refer to your friendly neighborhood bigot was the expression she right. used. Uh, you said this does no more good, no more harm than the Judeo-Christian ethic has done in, in 2,000 years. Uh, you don't really have any fears, obviously, that, uh, no, that, I that, don't. You, that you make bigotry popular. I mean, you, you, it would be foolish of me to say that I don't think uh, what I spend my life doing is worth something. By the same token, it would be so self-serving to talk about it's doing good in a yeah. world where so much is needed. I can't think about it in those terms. Mm. But when Laura Z. Hobson criticize, criticizes a certain aspect of it, then I must respond to that specific. Uh, she claimed there's no such thing as a lovable bigot. Uh, I grew up with one. My father was a bigot, and, uh, and I loved him. Mm -hmm. And a great many other people loved a great many things about him. I suspect that my children look at certain aspects of my personality and think, uh, oh, God, that's Archie. You know, yeah. because there, there, are thing, there are things that make me very narrow in their young minds. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they see a little bit of that in, in me. So uh, I do believe there's a little bit mm -hmm. in all of us. And uh, uh, as I said, I had uncles, uh, neighbors, and so forth, quite mm -hmm. likable people. Take the bigotry out of all the good people on the earth, and I doubt if we'd have a problem. Mm -hmm. You've been quoted as saying that you never forgave your father for being a bigot, though you've been quoted as saying what you've just said, that you loved him. I don't uh, quite understand why you never forgave him for being a bigot. I, I, don't, re I don't recall a uh, quote. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't sound like me. But there is a large part of your father in Archie Bunker then? There, there is a large, you know, mm -hmm. good portion of, uh, of him. But, you know, that was in, in the early shows in which I did a good deal more writing. Uh, I wrote a lot out of my own experience. I find, uh, as we now are involved in three and four shows, uh, where it's a, it's a group of people all drawing out of a, uh, an experience that we mm -hmm. find quite common. It's a common experience. Mm -hmm. You, uh, your father wasn't, like Archie, a, a wasp bigot, I gather. No, I'm Jewish, and, mm -hmm. uh, and that's because grew, he grew was. up in, in New Haven? In, in Hartford. In Hartford, yeah. Uh -huh. And so it was a somewhat different kind of life that, from which you're drawing this experience. Right. But it's the kind, so, same kind of bigot that Laura but, C. Hobson knew. I see. But it, it is but, bigotry. Bigotry has no limitations upon... I, I don't uh, think it uh, does uh, at all. On background or class or, or race either, I suppose. No, I don't think What kind of that. boyhood was it? You moved around a great deal. I beg your pardon? Say, what kind of boyhood was it? You must have moved around a great deal. You well, I was it. raised in, uh, in Hartford, uh, you know, born in New Haven, raised mm -hmm. largely in Hartford, except for a couple of years in New York. Uh, oh, I forgot three or four years in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. in uh, Revere, and in uh, uh, Winthrop, and Everett. Now, I don't know how it happened. I don't remember anymore why we lived in three different cities in, don't know why you moved, in that yeah. short period oh, of time. Yeah. We might have been deflating the value of property. That might have been my father's line of work at the time. Uh -huh. Moving around, uh, causing the property values to lower. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but we did do quite a bit of moving around. He was in a lot of businesses. Mm -hmm. My father was one of those chaps, and this was one of his most endearing qualities. Uh, 
He was going to do something terribly important in, in eight to ten days. Always in eight to ten days. In eight to ten days, something very big was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, all my life, I, I can remember eight to ten days, mm -hmm. you wait. What and was your ambition? My ambition was, uh, uh, I was born a, a, a depression kid. And uh, I had one uncle on either side of my fa uh, family, maternal and paternal side, that uh, when he met his nephews, and he had, I think, seven of us, that he threw a quarter to, uh, and, and usually a new quarter. He used to carry new quarters that he would throw to his nephews. And he was a press agent uh, and that connected with the theater. Mm -hmm. Well, Uncle Jack could throw a nephew a quarter. It was an incredible thing in the Depression. You could run immediately uh, and, and buy a quart of ice cream. And a quart of ice cream was a treat uh, in the days when there wasn't uh, anything but an ice box, no, re no uh, freezer in the house. Uh, I wanted to be Uncle Jack, so I wanted to be a press agent. That's all I ever wanted to be, was a press agent. What about your education? I went to uh, Weaver High School in Hartford, Connecticut. And uh, my last year of high school uh, the, was the first year that the American Legion sponsored its uh, national oratorical contest. I don't know if they still do that. And uh, I really wasn't planning to go to college because the family couldn't afford to send me. And uh, I entered this uh, oratorical contest and progressed through to the New England and then the regional, or perhaps the regional was first, but I, I won either the New England or the regional uh, championship. And it uh, had as its first prize a scholarship to Emerson College in Boston. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Emerson. Do you recall what the uh, title or the topic of the oration was? Uh, everybody had to speak on... Uh, some aspect of the Constitution, and I don't remember what, uh, the, the Constitution is what we had to talk about, and mm -hmm. I talked about the Constitution too. Did you ever succeed in becoming a press agent? Yes. You did. Yes, was was a, this your first was, job? First thing I did getting out of the Army, I was in, uh, at Emerson when the war broke, uh, the Great War. <laughs> the, <laughs> not the one between the states, the other Great War, and, and uh, I enlisted, and uh, when I came, as a matter of fact, when I was still in Foggia, Italy, which uh, is where Army, which is where Archie also served. I see. Uh, There's a good reason then why Archie yes. served in Foggia. Uh, when uh, when I was still in Foggia, I, I recall going to a local printer and standing over his shoulder and picking out the letters, and we made up a uh, a piece of paper which we sent out to several press houses. Uh, press agents in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. And I had a job before I left Italy, before oh. I was mustered out of the service. Mm -hmm. That job didn't last because you're no longer a press agent. No, it lasted about a year, mm -hmm. and then we decided to come west, and uh, some, you something to come made west? me want to become a writer. Why did you decide to come west? Was that, uh, you felt, what the opportunity was going to be as a writer? No, I, I, I think... One of the other things my father always used to talk about, he used to say, Jeanette, one day we're going to have, we're going to live on one floor. We used to have a little two-floor house in, mm -hmm. in, the, in uh, Hartford. And he said, one day we're going to, a ranch house. That had such a ring of mystery and mm -hmm. uh, romance and beauty. We're going to have a ranch house, Jeanette, in California. You're going to be able to reach out of your bedroom and take an orange off a tree. Uh, we've used that in one yeah, of the that's shows. That's the great dream of the Depression and years. I was that was his years. great dream. Yeah. And uh, coming to California clung with me. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to come to California. And no, wanting to be a press agent, mm -hmm. uh, having been doing that in the cold climate in New York, it seemed natural to come west and, and try here. The story is told about your getting your first job as a writer with Danny Thomas. Is that so? Uh, writing a, a bit for him for a benefit he was doing in, the two, yes. in, in two hours. Is that the way you, got, you really broke into it? I was writing with a, a good friend uh, by the name of Ed Simmons 
who works at CBS now. I see him all the time. He does the Carol Burnett show. And uh, we were writing, uh, we had a little office above a delicatessen. <laughs> and uh, we would meet in the evenings and, uh, and write a parody or some little thing that we could rush out to a local bar uh, or, or a nightclub, rather. Mm -hmm. Uh, I said bar because the first thing we ever sold was at a place called the Bar Music on Beverly Boulevard. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we ran out one night and we sold a parody for $25, a parody to the Sheik of Araby. <laughs> and, uh, and between us, we had not made $25 that day selling baby pictures door to door. You and were a door to door, door salesman. That's what yes. we were doing, yeah. trying to keep things together. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, that I knew then I was going to be I was going to write because that was the you know the, the way to to uh, to use what I had practiced as a as a uh, publicist because that required a lot of writing uh, and the feeling I had for the entertainment business so uh, we had an idea for Danny Thomas and only knew that his agent was a company called the William Morris Office. And uh, I called the William Morris office, and speaking as quickly as I could, I said, my name is Merle Robinson. I'm with the New York Times. I've been doing a story on some uh, important personalities in California. I'm at the airport now. I had talked to Danny Thomas. I have two questions left. Must ask him right away. They gave me his number like that. Uh, and by the way, the reason for the name Merle Robinson is he had been a childhood friend in, in Connecticut. And in the army overseas, whenever I was stopped by an MP for you, being in some kind of problem, my name was always Merle Robinson. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> does Merle Robinson know all this? Merle Robinson is still in Hartford, Connecticut, and I hope the show plays. Uh, <laughs> I there. hope so too. <laughs> but uh, I did see Danny Thomas that afternoon, mm. or he called him rather, mm. and he answered the phone. Was working at the moment and said, if you have something that runs about seven minutes and can be here in about 15 minutes, uh, we may be able to talk because I need something in three nights for a Ciro's, uh, an event at Ciro's. Mm. And I said, we can't make it in 15, but we can be there in two hours because we knew we hadn't written it yet. <laughs> well, we wrote it, got to his house two hours later, and. Uh, and he did it three nights later at Ciro's. And that began a, career, a new career for you as a comedy writer then? We were in New York, uh, <laughs> after having come out here mm -hmm. from New York, we were back in New York uh, four days later writing a one-hour television show every week. Hmm. Now you wrote uh, for Martin and Lewis when Martin and Lewis were both together. Yes. And uh, yeah. George Goble and other comedy shows. Uh, why, what brought you to all in the Family. You'd, you'd done some movies bef before um, you yes. moved into All in the Family, I know, uh, including uh, The Night They Raided Minsky's, I think was one of your... I was work. editing The Night They Raided Minsky's uh, in New York when I read about uh, an English program called uh, Till Death Do Us Part. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what made me think of my father right away, because it was about a father and a son-in-law who had great arguments about everything. Mm -hmm. uh, that was topical. So it was the association of Till Death Do Us Part with your father that made you want to do an American adaptation. Yes, I had no desire at all to, to do any television. I had always, well, I enjoyed specials, but mm -hmm. the, the weekly form uh, I didn't mm -hmm. care about. But suddenly this excited me, mm -hmm. the possibility of doing something very topical, uh, doing it live, Doing it with a live audience as opposed to film and a, and a machine that laughs at hello there. Because of the interaction between the actor and the audience? Because I like theater oh. and tape. Uh, as we sit here and talk, it's as mm -hmm. close as you can get yeah. to, to performing in mm -hmm. theater. You know, any mistake you make is there. Now, given the enormous success of the show, it does seem a little odd and looking back that it didn't get on the air right away. It took uh, a couple of years to get this show on the air, didn't it? Yeah. And even then it went on. I, I made a, another picture, Cold Turkey, in the interim. Mm -hmm. uh, we made it for one network and finally sold it to... Uh, made it for ABC. Right. And ABC didn't uh, uh, f thought it would create problems. What kind of problems? I guess that, that's pretty obvious, isn't ABC it? ABC never told me what yeah. problems. As a matter of fact, uh, they, they never told me they weren't going to put it on the air. Oh. A network doesn't do that, you see. Mm -hmm. A network tells you... Uh, 
Oh, we like it. It's a good pilot. Good pilot. Everybody laughed. They Just never we caught like you. It. Uh, then you say, well, will it be scheduled? And they say, well, we're working on the scheduling now. We, you know, God's killing us here in the Bahamas, but we're all here working on it. <laughs> and uh, we'll get back to you, you yeah. know. And you know whether you're on or off usually when you pick up the paper and read the schedule. Is that the way you're notified? That's, mm -hmm. I, I know with very few exceptions mm -hmm. of people who have been told, and if they have been told, they were called the night before it appeared in print. Yeah. Well, the, pro the problem, obviously, in those days, and had it not been on the air now, it's still today, would cause problems because of the language and the, and the subjects and so forth. But it did get on CBS two years later. Now, what caused the change in attitude? A um, wonderful man by the name of Robert Wood became president nice. of the network, mm -hmm. and he wanted to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess he just screwed his courage to the wall and and uh, and said, "Let's go." It's a big risk on his part. Uh, there, I, not to my mind, mm -hmm. because I, you know, you I, believed I, in the show. I believed in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was a risk because he was surrounded by people, and the network still is, and all networks are. And I do not want to separate networks from the rest of American business and, mm -hmm. and government by uh, a kind of think tank mentality uh, which insists that the American public is ready for much less than the public is ready for. Uh, What's given you such confidence, Norman, in, in the, the uh, audience in America that you believe that they are ready for it? I love it. I mean, I love the, I, I, I love the people. I, I, to have traveled extensively and spent a lot of time in various areas of the country. I feel I know them well. Uh, look what's happening now. Uh, in this energy crisis, Detroit has finally decided to discontinue manufacturing large automobiles. Mm -hmm. But the American public was buying Volkswagens, causing Datsuns to be invented, and Toyotas and whatnot and brought into this country. The public was buying these cars many years ago trying by buying foreign cars to tell Detroit, do something. This is what we want. But they never listen. They have a think tank kind of thing going on which insists that another kind of research tells them America wants something different. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that the, uh, the uh, means they use to research, because I know about what they do in television and the mistakes they make there, but I'm sure that they make the equivalent mistakes in other industries and come up with the wrong answers. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been credited with making a kind of breakthrough with All in the Family and, and uh, later with the spin-off program, Maud. But have you had your own problems with um, uh, continuity acceptance, as the term is used in broadcasting, with languages, with language, with treatment, has it been a uh, much of a battle, or has it been relatively easy going? No, it's been relatively easy, mm -hmm. uh, not easy. Uh, it's been uh, it's been healthy. I mean, uh, I deal with very good people. Uh, the head of program practices at CBS is a man by the name of Tom Swafford. Uh, he's a very intelligent, uh, brilliant man, and uh, a very kind and lovely man. The man here who heads up the department in Los Angeles is a man by the name of Norman Nelson. We, we, and, and another chap by the name of Tom Donner. And our talks are long and extensive and deep. And, uh, and they have changed my mind about uh, uh, things often. And I often change their mind. Mm -hmm. And it's just a question of give and take. So it's not a matter of facing frustration. I, I'm mm -hmm. wondering about uh, the changes you felt uh, were necessary when you adapted Till Death Do Us Part from the uh, BBC for American television audiences. Uh -huh. I'm told, I've never seen Till Death Do Us Part, I'm told it's a, a bit stronger than All in the Family. And that, is that the BBC? Is it an English audience? Is it because it's in a different context? Or is it because it doesn't run as many weeks out of the year? As I recall, Till Death Do Us Part is a short series, like six or seven weeks. That's all. Then six then or seven weeks in the course of the year. Uh, I, I only saw one episode and read uh, the remaining scripts. Mm. Uh, there are only 24 made altogether. Mm. And uh, we've made 80 some All in the Families in, in its lifetime. Yeah. But uh, I didn't think it was any stronger than All in the Family at all. As a matter of fact, I think some of the topics we handle uh, are far stronger than the incidental one line. Uh, uh, the, the content. 
The content of, of that show were really the, the, uh, the one-line jokes and digs at the uh, uh, whatever Alf Garnett, that was the character's mm -hmm. name, was, uh, was talking about. But they, they had no themes. Uh, and all in the family discusses a great many themes that are important to Americans. And uh, they didn't. And I think those themes are stronger than the individual lines. When you're uh, number one on the ratings, as you are with All in the Family, uh, it must put, some, put you under some pressure to maintain this kind of success. What is the formula for sustaining success? Or are you I, I, prepared to accept the fact that there are going to be trends no matter what? I don't know. It's not easy to think about uh, uh, how one does that. We're in the business of theater. And uh, as you schedule this show, I'm sure you try to have somebody sitting in this, the chair opposite you that is quite different from the person who was there last week. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we try very hard not to do the same show twice and to vary the attitudes and so that the audience never knows what they're going to tune in. You've got to keep the to audience see. slightly off guard so that everything is not predictable then. Right. And we, we try very hard to do that. If there's any reason why we have had some longevity uh, at the high point of the ratings, I think it's because of that. When you tune in all in the family, Edith may be coming home with a serious medical problem. And it may be a very funny show, too. Uh, or somebody may die in the middle of the first act, as also happened on another episode. The same thing is true of Maud. You don't know, as you tune in, uh, what problem you're going to see, and I think that's a prime uh, reason. Norman, one final question in uh, the minute or so we have, and uh, it's, uh, it's perhaps a difficult one for you, but if it were possible to make changes, to bring about change in your programs, what kind of changes would you most like to see brought about in this country? What kind of changes would I like to see brought about? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see the day come soon when, uh, when, when everybody was stressing the things that uh, connect us as opposed to the things that disconnect us. I'm mm -hmm. talking about all people. I find that the umbilical uh, that the many umbilicals that connect my friends on the right, uh, you referred to me as a, as a liberal at mm -hmm. the beginning, I shy from the word. I don't mm -hmm. like the, the label, any kind of label. But right or left, I find that there are so many umbilicals that connect us that are so much stronger and so, many, so more numerous than the things that disconnect us. I'd like to see a little more stress on the former. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.